On this episode we're uh, going to base this from Finike Marina where we've decided to escape the Turkish weather for a few few nights and um, what I've decided to do this time is just take a look around on our yacht um, which is also our home of some of the key favourite things that we like on it. Some of them are through necessity and some of them are just because we like them and um, I think we've got about 10 or 12 that, I don't know, make our lives happier or easier or healthier. And um, so we'll take a look at them uh, one by one. First up is, <clears throat> for me, yeah, something I wanted, um, was looking forward to when we unpacked our bags, was my Bose um, Soundlink spe speaker. Lovely little piece of kit and uh, I use it everywhere. This is the sound link. It's USB chargeable. Um, has a wonderful sound and it's called the Revolve because literally you can see the speaker revolves in 360 degrees. So it's, it's pretty nice. Um, has a really good battery life and, <clears throat> and an awesome sound. Another thing is, I guess, to say about it is that several devices can connect it to it once and play playlists, etc. Another valued asset on the boat is the Magma barbecue, and this I bought in Greece for a lot of money. It was too much money, actually. Um, at the time, it was yeah, I can't remember what it was, but it was expensive, and. Uh, I know now now know why the the stainless steel is marine grade it hasn't been polished this one for a while but um, unbelievably it cooks like chicken breasts and things that usually are quite tricky to cook on a barbecue really really well um, I'm so impressed I've never cooked chicken as well as I have on this it has an option of having uh, two gas outlets as in feeds you can inlets you can use straight off the Turkish or uh, Greek gas bottles or the disposable camping gas really really valuable and uh, absolutely love it stops the smoke from coming inside when we're cooking meat or other things and um, yeah it just sits there voyages I don't tuck it away or cover it. another favorite thing on our boat is the simple Kindle now we all have one of these and I have one Silka has one and Luca has one and they are probably one of the most dumb versions of examples of technology but they are just so good these are called paper whites and you can see them in broad daylight or at night time because they're backlit and yeah, you can see them in full years. sun how many um, books have you got on yours oh heaps <laughs> I can't even count them yeah so there's like a whole library you can keep literally thousands of books on one kindle and um yeah they are definitely a valuable thing on a boat because books a don't like the weather and they're heavy and take up lots of storage so a kindle is on our list of favorites these are our favorite uh, one of our favorite pieces of kit it's the cobra marine vhf radio system handheld they're pretty powerful uh, weatherproof in fact one of our first ever man overboard practices was in the middle of a passage and I accidentally in fact I think Lucy accidentally knocked one of them overboard so uh, being 
orange around the sides they were quite easy one it was quite easy to spot in the sea and it floated we went around in circles picked it up and it goes just as good as the day as we got it so um, lovely piece of kit it also doubles up as a communication between um, shore and land or shore in the dinghy um, especially when we don't have uh, two cell phones so um, uh, an independent and uh, useful useful kit okay speaking of phones we have Samsung phones on the boat and I have my um, Samsung S9 which is the flagship a few years ago it's a fantastic phone uh, this one is a little bit damaged there's a small crack on there but it takes unbelievably good photographs sadly however and we're trying to work out ways to um, fund a new one we were walking and um, I took a tumble first tumble ever even when I've been paragliding I haven't fallen this bad and my fall got broken by my other Samsung which not only did it smash the screen on both sides it also bent and buckled it so um, sadly my phone is no longer but um, I still use this one for taking photographs and I'll show you just a couple of them now they're just amazing and uh, even though I have a full DSLR kit on board my Nikon range with full lenses and flashes etc this is the one I go to it's an incredible camera right and our list of useful and loved items on our boat is this rather odd item funny enough is very loved and this is a small um, washing machine and it doesn't have a brand or anything it's got two tubs one two uh, this one is for washing and this one is for spin drying it holds mm, don't know maybe a kilo and a half two kilos of uh, washing the spin dryer works unbelievably well the washing machine yeah better than hand washing certainly uh, when you're doing a load for a family a loads for a family um, this is far preferable um, pretty good on water we make water as we do the washing so um, it runs off 240 volts and uh, you know as it looks it looks like a uh, barbie doll accessory but this is fantastic it is in our spare room um, so it does take some space but it's highly it's light and portable so we can move it from room to room if we have guests that's another loved device All right another one on the list of loved devices is this fairly large I'll show you the proportion of it large fairly cumbersome but nonetheless valuable dehumidifier now on boats especially in the winter time with four of us inside the galley and cabin um, in our rooms uh, breathing and if it's raining and cold we build up there's a lot of um, humidity inside the boat and of course condensation on the fiberglass surfaces and um, this becomes a huge problem with mildew and mold uh, so we ordered this one and run it when we use the generator so this runs for about two or three hours a day when the generator is running and um, does a fantastic job it shows the uh, humidity just down here and after just a couple of hours running <coughs> get rid of the water when you think about it uh, dropping a liter of water or so every time into the sink you know that's come out of our um, out of our clothes and items in the in the yacht so that's valuable not everything is electric or um, electronic on our list today one thing that is probably the most analog and simple what do you reckon toilet plunger very useful although I'm not sure we've ever used it for uh, its intended purpose so I'll show you what we use it for and uh, it's used every day so <clears throat> in poly Candros we have floors which cover up the bilges now these bilges are a um, pretty uh, important uh, storage area so 
and up. We can lift up our bilges and access our um, pantry and all sorts of things. A recent addition on this list is uh, something we put in for winter and it's our diesel heater. Now it's a very small little like a jet turbine heater. Um, it has uh, a little injector that injects diesel straight from our main fuel tank, diesel tank. Um, it's pretty economic. They say it's five kilowatt. I wouldn't say it's actually putting up that much heat, although we don't run it that high. But uh, it's quiet and uses very little power to um, fan the heat through the yacht. It's um, maintenance free and we absolutely love it. There's not much to show, but I'll show you the uh, controls just now. So there are the controls for our diesel heater. We simply turn it on. It takes a while to warm up. It clicks and clacks and does a few things, um, but it does a fantastic job. Now this was a highly debated device that we um, talked and chewed the fat over trying to work out whether it was going to be something we wanted. Um, as a lot of people said, oh, you know, they, they um, require a lot of energy to run and, you know, for the cost of them, which was about $7,000, New Zealand, you could buy a lot of water. And of course you could. I mean, you could buy an end a lifetime supply of bottled water probably. You could also go to piers and buy water off piers. <clears throat> the issue being is that not always have you access to bottled water. Secondly, we don't like bottled water because of all the plastic. And when we go to a pier, usually that's on a marina, so we've got to pay marina fees. If not, we go to a town pier and quite possibly it's heavily chlorinated or in fact unsuitable water for drinking. So um, this means also that if we're out in a uh, wilderness or a long way away from anywhere, we don't have to be basing our travels on our water. Um, just here sticking out is a little uh, <clears throat> hose that we use to fill up our water bottles and uh, drinking containers directly. It's plumbed into our main aft tank and we make about 270 litres at a time, and which is our full tank and it makes it at about 80 litres per hour. It goes through a um, reverse osmosis system into through a membrane, uses water out of the sea, and uh, has a little tester there to tell us the, um, the salt content. And we make water at the same time as we make power and washing. <clears throat> so it's a, we run it to be economic with our, with our uh, generator. One thing uh, sitting at the back of our little cupboard here is my Nanopresso. This little item has made approximately well, nearly 1,000 coffees since I've owned it, which was uh, when I bought it in New Zealand and we've had it on board. It makes uh, one double shot black espresso and it makes a really good job. Um, I just love it. It's one of my favorite things. In fact, it's probably at the top of the list for my favorite items. Um, we just use ground coffee that we buy at the uh, supermarket, nothing fancy. And we use this little <coughs> Aero Latte, Latte, Aero Latte, um, whiz to wisp up um, milk for foam for those who like cappuccinos. Another one on my list um, as the media creator of the family is my DJI Mavic. Now I actually have two Mavics. One's the Mavic Pro 2 and this is the Mavic Mini. And this as you can see is pretty little. My hand covers it up it's a tiny little device, tiny little drone, 249 grams. Um, absolutely tiny, but it shoots um, 2K footage and fits in a backpack and just goes anywhere. It has, um, let me see, we have a battery pack here which will hold one and a half hours of flight time. This is gold, so anywhere we go, I take this just on the off chance I need to get higher and 
use um, aerial images or video. Now it looks like a toy, actually feels like a toy, but this does a fantastic job and um, the images you're looking at all came from this particular drone. Um, it's quite incredible. I've been using drones for approximately oh, nine years now, maybe ten years. The early ones I built myself, which were terrible, didn't have a camera. And now on to about my fifth or sixth generation DJI drone. Um, I can't beat it and it wouldn't be without this for doing my, my job making videos. I said this was going to be uh, 10 items. I think it's stretched out to maybe uh, 13. We've just got so many really good useful things that um, any one of them I don't think we could be without. So uh, the very last on this list of highly recommended and useful items is a um, safety and security device made by a New Zealand company called Vespa and it is the Watchmate 8000 Vespa Marine AIS. It stands for automatic identification system so what this does it um, connects to our VHF antenna on the yacht which is at the very top of our 60 foot mast and essentially it picks up other signals from other boats AIS systems we have a class B AIS um, because of their size which were on relatively small um, information that's um, picked up from other boats and we are transmitting is our type of vessel whether a sailing craft our length and our speed direction and because of this um, information other operators depending on their software and, and whatever they're using can also pick up the information and use it so they can actually work out um, collision courses and things like that. On top of this information we can um, set it when we drop our anchor and just recently two weeks ago we had a squall which uh, sent us to about 40 something knots gusts and um, we were set our anchor in mud and the um, the gusts actually dragged, dragged our boat and anchor. Um, it was just on dusk and our anchor alarm sounded, our Vespa alarm, watch mate alarm sounded and we were able to get up on deck very quickly, start the motor, reset the anchor. So it was absolute gold. The other amazing thing about this uh, watch mate as opposed to a lot of the um, um, Android and, and Apple smart apps is that this one is built into the AIS system and it will, um, which means that I can set it via my my phone, my smart my smartphone. I can set it and adjust it and monitor it, and I can see where we're going and uh, how we're doing. But then, of course, like many other people, I turn my phone off at night, um, or the batteries go flat, you know, whatever. So I turn it off. The AIS continues to monitor it, and it has an it has an alarm in my. Um, uh, navigation station and uh, so it still goes that's magic and this is the only thing you can see from it so right next to my radio is the um, light to say that our AIS is on and the switch and the button actually deactivates a uh, an alarm so that's all we see so the AIS itself is just tucked in behind the seat here and she is using the splitter a, uh, an aerial from the VHF radio it also has a GPS uh, antenna outside as well most of the items we've got on our most loved and appreciated list are in actual fact tools that uh, help us um, with our everyday life and um, some of them are for happiness and one of the last ones is one that Silka likes the most and that's her stand-up paddleboard. Now this is an inflatable version and uh, is just fantastic. It takes about five minutes to inflate and tucks away in the forehead lazarette.
so we see a lot of pedal boards uh, tied to the railings and tied to the each sides of um, yachts and uh, apart from windage and weather um, pretty ugly looking but our one just tucks in to the lazarette right down the bottom and just it's pretty small and compact it's awesome one of the other things on uh, on the yacht that has recently become um, identified as a valuable and, and useful piece of kit is this this is the Garmin Explorer, inReach, Navigator, GPS, whole pile of things. Now, um, I bought this in New Zealand and um, haven't used it yet because it does require activation on a, a GPS subscription service, which uh, Garmin uses through, I think, um, Iridium. A guy in New Zealand, David Tate, uh, works for a company called trackme.co.nz and um, they provide the subscription service and services uh, of various trackers and devices anyway they have kindly offered this is a plug to um, keep us subscribed for a year on polycandros during our travels and this allows us to live track and update to our website so uh, links will be underneath um, in the information area to our site so you can actually see exactly where we are it updates every 10 minutes while we're moving and updates every four hours while we're still this also has the ability to send and receive uh, emails and text messages it has a very cool little side switch here which is an SOS button hit that and the cavalry come instantly so I can also receive uh, weather and this is all via satellite, not through cell situations. Um, fantastic piece of kit, and um, you know it's one of the safety safety systems on the boat that I really appreciate. So yeah, trackme.co.nz sell these things, and also the subscriptions and services. Thanks, guys. All right. So this over here is our fluff generator. Lucy is losing. That's the fluff generator. <laughs> lots up here and this is the fluff eliminator a uh, plek and decker so it's a mini plek and decker which we bought in Athens and Crease in the media market and it was a hundred euros wasn't it was it mm, 99 no, euros something like that yeah so it wasn't an exorbitant cost but we do have lots of here everywhere and the fluff goes in here as you can see there's already some so you just check that out and this is a filter that you just turn out and give a rinse. 